Hi everyone, it's Apostle Michelle Peterson and I have a really uh, special message for you today. And it is about can a Christian, someone that is born again, born again, love the Lord, their whole life is dedicated to the Lord, can they still end up in hell? And um, I talked to the Lord last night when he gave me this. Um, he said yes. And the reason is unforgiveness so that is what we're going to talk about today i'm going to share with you guys some of the things that the lord actually said about unforgiveness so if you are new to my channel thank you so much for joining me i am apostle michelle peterson and uh, a little about me i have been in uh, deliverance ministry over 10 years and the lord has taught me so much about the spiritual realm and how things work in it uh, being in that type of ministry has drawn me really really close to the lord and so because of that um, the Lord has called me specifically to help other people get really, really close to Him and walk with Him really, really close. So if that's something you're interested in, learning more about God, um, getting free from all the things that the enemy uh, is attacking you with, please subscribe to my channel. And when you hit the subscription button, there is a little bell. Make sure you tap that button and uh, that's the notification button that you will get notified whenever I upload new videos every week. Okay, so the message today is a really powerful message. I have a lot of scriptures um, that I would like to share with you guys. We're going to be in Matthew talking about um, unforgiveness today. So we might say, why can someone that loves God, they're totally sold out for God, and they are born again, filled with God's Holy Spirit, and how can they still end up in hell? And... Um, you know, it's a sad thing, but this is what the Lord actually told me all of these things last night. And I'm going to share with you, but let's go ahead and read some scriptures really fast. Okay, Matthew 6, 14. I'm just going to read two scriptures and then I'm going to give you guys the words that the Lord actually said. And then after this video, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pray for those who have been struggling with unforgiveness in your heart towards a person, maybe it's someone that really, really hurt you when you were a kid, abused you, molested you, um, maybe it's your parents, the way they abandoned you or treated you, um, you know, maybe it's the enemy. Uh, I would like to pray for you, if you are a believer, I would like to pray for you that that is removed from your heart, okay, because I'm going to share with you what the Lord said, how serious this is. So if we go to Matthew 6, 14, this is Jesus speaking here, we're going to read from, uh, Matthew six fourteen through 15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Okay? Um, and I'm just going to share a couple of words with you what the Lord said. And then I want to go back up to Matthew um 18 and read a, a pretty good chunk of it um, just to let you see what the Lord is talking about here. But this is what the Lord said. I asked him about this. Why is unforgiveness, you know, a sin basically? And so this is what he said. The reason why unforgiveness is a sin is because they deserve to be forgiven. Whoever it is that hurt you, God said they deserve to be forgiven so if you don't forgive them that's why it is a sin because that person deserves it they deserve to be forgiven and I asked the Lord well why why do why do uh, people deserve to be forgiven and so this is what he said because we have sinned because you and me we have sinned also we've hurt a person we've hurt God we've sinned against God we've did a lot of stuff I'm pretty sure We've done something to hurt somebody's feelings, whether we meant it or not. And we definitely hurt God's feelings. Um, we definitely hurt His heart, you know. And But this is the reason why other people, they deserve to be forgiven because we have sinned also. And if we don't forgive them, it's a sin. So I'm going to read about um, the parable of the unforgiven servant that's in Matthew 18. 21 so I'm going to read 21 through 35 then came Peter to him and said Lord how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times Jesus said unto him I say not unto thee unto seven times but 
until 70 times 7. Therefore is the, and then he goes into ter telling the parable of the Lord Jesus. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, was one brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and children and all that he had, and payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will repay, I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of the servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him 100 pence, not even that much money. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. Okay, he's choking the guy. And the servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me. I will repay thee all. And he would not. The guy would not even have patience with him. He would not, you know, give him, give him, have mercy on him. He went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that he had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. Now, I'll tell you who, um, well, I'll read the last one. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Now, how powerful is this? Now, this is what the Lord told me. The tormentors, when you are turned over to the tormentors, when you keep unforgiveness in your heart, you are turned over to the tormentors. The tormentors is Satan and his kingdom. That's what the Lord said. That's who you're turned, that's who the tormentors are. You're turned over to them. And so the Lord Jesus in 35, verse 35, he says, the same way this fellow servant was turned over to the tormentors, the Lord Jesus said, so likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Okay, <clears throat> so now this is the Lord. I started asking the Lord more questions. I said, Lord, well, why is this sin of unforgiveness so serious that uh, if a person, you know, can't forgive or they don't want to forgive someone for hurting them, why is it a, such a serious sin that they are turned over to Satan and, you know, the king, Satan's kingdom and turned over to the tormentors? Why is this such a serious sin? So this is what the Lord said to me about unforgiveness. The reason why unforgiveness is a sin, he said, is because it is evil. It's not love. Now this is what the Lord said. The reason why unforgiveness is a sin because is because it's evil, it's not love. Unforgiveness is not love. He said, because like when you think about it, when you don't forgive someone, if they hurt you, you don't forgive them, you hold it in your heart, you're like, mm -mm, no, mm -mm. that's not love. You're not showing that person any love anymore. I'll go in and tell you everything else the Lord said. He said, um, What happens whenever you don't forgive someone? This is what happens. The Lord said, we close our hearts towards the person and we stop loving them. He said, this is what makes unforgiveness evil because we close our hearts to the person and stop loving them. That's actually what makes it evil. If you kept your heart open and you still loved them and you still stayed around them, you know, and then it wouldn't be a sin. But you close your heart to the person. 
and you stop loving them. Closing your heart to people and not loving them is actually a sin. Hmm. That's terrible, right? When you close your heart to a person and you don't love them, that's actually a sin. Regardless of what they did to you, when you stop loving them, that's a sin. Now, the Lord said, everything that we do that is not love, everything that me and you do, and every person in this whole world, everything that we do that is not love, it's a sin. Everything. Every time you do something that is not love, it's a sin. And this is what the Lord said. This is basically the definition of sin. Everything we do that is not love is a sin. When you're doing these things to people and God, this, this is sin. You're sinning against God and you're sinning against people. Okay, this is something else the Lord said. He said, I don't want my people to perish. I want them to be like me. I want them to be a part of me. I want them to walk with me. I love them. But So what I wanted to say was that God has to help me keep unforgiveness out of my heart because I get attacked a lot. Um, the enemy will use people to attack me. So I have to make sure I keep my heart pure and clean towards a person and, and try to still, you know, see them, um, you know, in a great way, even though, you know, um, I have to see them even if they never attack me, you know. So God has to help me with that all the time. I have a relationship with God. Um, you probably have a relationship with God too. And the thing about this is that God doesn't want us to perish. We have a relationship with Him. But unforgiveness is that important that it will cause you to perish. And let me just go ahead and read. I want to definitely make sure um, I, I read these scriptures because I was just crying from all of this stuff last night. Um, in Matthew 5... 43 through 48, Jesus is saying here, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and do good to them that hate you, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans do the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now when the Lord said this, He said, I don't want my people to perish. I want them to be like me. This is what the Lord Jesus is saying here. Be, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. The Lord said here, I don't want my people to perish. I want them to be like me. I want them to be part of me. I want them to walk with me. I love them. Now, when you read this scripture, the Lord Jesus here is talking about loving your enemies. He's saying that in the old days, you know, I guess in the old covenant, they were saying, you you know, just love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But Jesus is saying, no, no, uh -uh, don't do that. That's, that's, not, that's not what, you know, it's about. You love them too. You love your enemies also. You bless them. You do good to them. You know, you pray for them. You know, that's what you do to your enemies. And then it talks about, that's what a child of God looks like. He said, therefore, ye may be the children of your Father, which is in heaven. He does the same thing. God does the same thing. God reigns on the unjust. God loves those that don't love him. God loves his enemies. God, you know, he's pure love. And Jesus is telling us, if we do the same thing, we will be the children of God. Because God does these same things. God loves. And then the Lord Jesus in 48, Matthew 5, 48 says, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Now this part right here is really, really powerful because he's saying being perfect. For us, me and you, 
to be perfect. Most people say, no one can be perfect, and that's impossible, blah, blah, blah. But the Lord Jesus here is saying for us to be perfect. Now, when you go and read, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? He's talking about love. Love, pure love, loving all people, your enemies, everyone. Because that's what makes God perfect, because he is pure love. That's why he's perfect. There's not even a little tiny speck of evil in him, because he's pure love. Now, if you and me can be like our God, like here he's saying, I want them to be like me. This is what he told me last night. I want them to be like me. And if we can love enemies and love everybody and not keep unforgiveness in our heart and keep get all of this stuff out of our heart towards people and love them and love them and keep our hearts open to them, we will be like our God. We will be able to love enemies. We will be able to walk in love. And so the Lord Jesus is saying here, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven, which is, which is perfect. Read this, you guys. This is talking about loving your enemies. That's what that whole part is about, loving your enemies. And then Jesus says that at the end. He's showing us how to be like our God. He's showing us how to walk and, and be perfect, like our Father is perfect. Because He loves... Uh, it says, God loves and reigns on those um, that are unjust and evil. He blesses them too. He loves them. And if we're only loving people that love us, we're no different from nobody, basically. You know, that doesn't make us special. If I love you because you love me, you know, then that's the only reason. When you start hating me, all of a sudden I don't love you anymore. I'm no different than anybody else. But... If I love you and you hate me, now that's different. That's the love of God. God does that. The Father in heaven does that. So that's why we're supposed to be like our God. So that's why the Lord said, I don't want my people to perish. I want them to be like me. I want them to be a part of me. I want them to walk with me because I love them. He said, I love them. So I'm going to share some more words with you guys about what the Lord said about unforgiveness. <clears throat> the Lord said that the enemy can control us if we have unforgiveness in our hearts. The enemy can control us if we have unforgiveness in our hearts because unforgiveness is a sin. Unforgiveness is not of God. Then the Lord said, sin in the heart opens up the door for the enemy to control us. Um, if you think of like all the types of sin that can actually get in your heart, anger can get in your heart, hurt, fear, um, rage, jealousy, um, envy, unbelief, doubt, hate, um, you know, these type of things, unforgiveness can actually get inside of our heart. That's a sin. These things are sins against people. You know, unforgiveness, um, you know, you know, I've known people that actually have unforgiveness towards God. Um, they believe that God killed someone that they loved and they won't forgive God. You know, so you can have these sins in your heart towards a person. And you can even have these same sins in your heart towards God. Like we can actually have unbelief and doubt in our hearts towards God. That means we don't really believe what he says. We don't believe the promises that he's made to us. We don't believe that he's going to take care of us. It's a lot of stuff. That's a sin in our heart towards God. That's personal. That's one-on-one -on -one with him. That's how we feel towards him. That's a sin. And because we have these sins in our hearts, the enemy can control us. He can do a lot with us. You know, he can totally have our minds just totally focus on the negative. There's so much stuff he can do. He can come in and start attacking us when we have sins in our heart. So the Lord said, um... The enemy can control us if we have unforgiveness in our hearts because it is a sin. Sin in our hearts opens the door to the enemy, for the enemy to control us, he said. Okay? The Lord said here, these sins defile the hearts. The hearts are not clean. Okay, so here is something else that the Lord said about unforgiveness. He said, unforgiveness can be removed. I want them to keep it from their hearts. I want them to remove it from their hearts when it enters their heart. Okay, so as soon as it enters your heart, the Lord wants you to remove it because it can be removed. It's, you know, it can be removed. So as soon as it enters, He wants you to remove it, okay?
I want you to go before the Lord, take each name, just start with one person at a time. Don't do the whole list. There's no blanket prayers for this. You have to be specific with one person at a time. Take that one person, that first person on the list, and repent. Repent to God and say, Heavenly Father, I ask that you forgive me for allowing unforgiveness towards uh, Mindy to enter into my heart, Father. I ask that you forgive me. I repent for allowing it to come into my heart. I ask that you forgive me, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Then what I want you to do is ask God to remove all the unforgiveness towards that person, towards Mindy, out of your heart. You can say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you remove all unforgiveness towards many that is in my heart, Heavenly Father. All the deep places um, where it went deep inside of my heart and really, really wounded me. Heavenly Father, I ask that you go into the deep places of my heart and remove all the unforgiveness towards her in Jesus' name. And also, what I want to do in this video, I want to pray for you. You can pause this uh, if you want to go ahead and do your list and um, play this. But I want to pray that... Um, you know, that God removes everything and also that God purifies and cleans your hearts from uh, unforgiveness, okay? And all other sins. Um, and also what I want to ask the Lord to do is replace everything that he's removing, all the unforgiveness and all the stuff, for him to replace it with love for the people. The love for the people that had hurt you. For him to replace um, the unforgiveness and the pain and everything um, towards that person and replace love. So you have love for that person, okay? Thank you, Father. Bless your name. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for everything that you're doing um, for us, Father. And thank you for revealing to us about how serious unforgiveness is, Lord. And Father, I ask that the per people who are watching this video, Lord, um, uh, the unforgiveness that they have in their heart, Father, all the residue, all the traces and evidence of unforgiveness that's in their heart towards the people that have hurt them. Heavenly Father, I ask that you go into their heart. I ask that you go deep into their hearts, Father. I ask that you even go all the way back to when they were a child and they were hurt. Things happened. They experienced pain and rejection and all of those things. The unforgiveness that uh, entered into their heart as a child, Father. I ask that you go all the way back there and gather and remove um, all that unforgiveness from their heart and cast it into the fire, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. And Father, I ask that all the seeds of unforgiveness, all the roots of unforgiveness, all the trees of unforgiveness that has been buried and planted in their hearts, Heavenly Father, I ask that you uproot all of those things, Father, all the seeds, all the roots, all the trees of unforgiveness, Father, and remove it from their heart and cast it into the fire, Father, in Jesus' name, Lord. And Heavenly Father, I ask that you uh, send water, uh, purifying water through their heart that it just flows through their heart to purify and cleanse their heart Heavenly Father. Father I ask that you also remove fear. Father I ask that you remove anger, rage, um, jealousy, envy, um, uh, unbelief, doubt, hatred. Father I ask that you go in and you remove all of those things also from their heart Heavenly Father. In Jesus name Father and Father I ask that you wash their heart, that you cleanse their heart, that you purify their hearts, that their hearts will be pure and clean from these sins, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, Lord, I ask that you totally purify their hearts. In Jesus' name. And Heavenly Father, all the sin, all the um, hurt, the pain, the unforgiveness that was in their heart, Heavenly Father, everything that you remove, Father, I ask that you replace it with your love, that you will give them love for these people that hurt them. That you will give them love for their enemies every time a new person tries to hurt them or offend them or say something um, to them, Father. I ask that you give them love, Father. I ask that you re replace that hurt, that offense with love in Jesus' name, Father. Father, I ask that you walk with them through this time, Lord, during this time, every day that you walk with them to help them um, keep this stuff out of their hearts, Lord, so that they can spend eternity with you. Father, I ask that you help them. I ask that you help them, Lord. Help them, Father. Take care of them. Protect their hearts. In Jesus' name.
Hey, you guys. This message is really, really powerful um, because it just lets us know certain things are not as, I guess we may think certain things are not really that serious that it can't stop us from getting into the kingdom of heaven, but um, these things in our heart, we can walk with God so close while we're here on the earth, and just those little things in our heart can cause us not to be with Him forever, for eternity. So, it's a serious thing, and like I said last night, I was really, really crying, you know, I was, I was crying, I mean, I was just like, Lord, you know, um, but this message is for you, take it, hold on to it, um, you know, and live this, apply it every day. So, I hope you guys have a blessed day and a great day. I'm going to do some, I'm going to record some more videos today. I'm going to try to get as many videos recorded so I can upload different ones. Um, but bless you guys and I'll see you in the next video.